Hello, Lucas. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay. Um, though it was already uh, touched upon in mm-hmm. the introduction, in a sentence, what do you believe that um, a policy coordinator does? I think the policy coordinator is the main way students are engaged with changing USU uh, via policy ideas and also the main way that offices are held to account uh, through the democratic processes that we have. Okay. So um, we want to democracy, as you kind of talked about. Uh, do you believe that the university suffers from a democratic deficit, especially in light of the, I think it's about 5% turnout for NS referendum? Yeah, I think a lot of UC members are disengaged. Um, like when we see voter turnouts for elections and for referendums, it is incredibly low. Um, and that is a massive issue because as an organisation, we have to question how well we represent students mm-hmm. if students aren't telling us yeah. what they want. Um, one way that I'd hope to address that is by advertising the work the PRG does to freshers and uh, throughout the year. Just very quickly, could you involved. just break down for the listeners what yeah. the PRG is? Okay, so the PRG is the Policy Review Group, mm-hmm. and they are an organi- uh, sorry, a small group chaired by the Policy Coordinator with four volunteers who are appointed at the beginning of the academic year. And they overview the USU policy process. So every time a motion is submitted to USU, um, they sort of look at it and say, can this be an officer decision? Can it just become policy? Uh, will it go to a referendum? And then they oversee things such as referendum and election rules as well. Sounds like an awful lot of power. Yeah, they are an independent student group and they are there to hold UC to account as a whole. Um, they're sort of slightly below the trustees, but they are the main way we remain like a student overseen body. Okay. You've run on a platform explicitly of liberation. Mm-hmm. Um, in your opinion, is it the job, is it your job to voice the students or to promote the voices of the minorities? Um, I think those don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think at York, we've got a strong liberation presence. Okay. And I think anyone in this role who doesn't encourage liberation students to send in motions would be failing in their duties. I think in order to fully represent students, that includes reaching out to different groups. You know, I'd also hope to reach out to colleges and societies as well as liberation groups and liberation students. But do you feel that you will be a trendsetter almost? You believe that if you came to the role, you'd be the first one to take it seriously as such? I think it's been taken seriously in the past. Um, I'd hope to be the one to grow the role and to grow student participation rather than the one to make it a serious role because I think it is quite a serious one already. So within your uh, uh, your position, how would you kind of encourage um, or at least bolster the, the strength of minority groups? Okay, so uh, I already have a strong level of engagement with the part-time officers and their networks. Mm-hmm. So I'd hope to work with those contacts that I already have. I'd hope to attend liberation group meetings such as International Students Association, uh, LGBTQ Women's Disabled Students Network and BAME Students Network to encourage people to get involved and advertise how they can get involved. Okay, um, you've held many NUS and UC positions. What's the biggest change you've made in one of these positions? Um, I would say taking the step up to NUS Trans Conference Steering. Um, because that was the first time I took on a mainly Mm policy-oriented role. Um, And it was also my first national role. And that was quite a big one for me, because it meant I stopped looking at USU and how we can perform on a local level, and looking at how we can engage students nationally, like including Scotland. And what did you achieve in that role? Um, So in that role, we became the first NUS Trans Steering Committee. you know, the first ones to exist because the campaign was only created this year. Um, But so far, we've put together um, an entire conference for people to debate policies. Uh, We've also received policy in, helped students to write policies. Um, It's quite similar to the policy coordinator role here at UC. Okay. Um, Will you leave any of these positions, given your new, if you do become elected, will you leave any of these positions due to the heavy workload that policy coordination entails? Yep, so I'm currently Secretary of LGBTQ Social, and that Mm -hmm. expires at the end of term uh, with handover. Uh, I have a few other roles as well Mm -hmm. that are... About nine? uh, Yep, but I have, I think, two or three that are running out within the next few weeks. Okay. Um, So it's sort of a changing workload rather than increasing. In the ballpark, will you have... Four more yeah. positions. I mean, are you, or you just go, you can keep many positions. I guess that's one point I'm asking because it is a lot. Have yeah. you already made clear it's a lot to do? Yeah. Um, so when I was deciding to run for this, I like. Sorry, we're getting.